Welcome to Chemisode, your guide to VCE chemistry. This is on equilibrium, so let's get stuck straight into it. Um, before we get into it, actually, um, I'd like you to show you these three things here. Edmodo is a website where you can find all the notes for these videos, so all the slides that I have on here can be found on Edmodo, so you can just download them and have a play with them, write your own notes on it iTunes, there is a Chemisode app for the iPhone and iPad. That's for Unit 3 at the moment and Unit 1. Unit 4 is taking a bit longer to put together, so it might not be out for a while yet, but um, stay tuned to that. And YouTube, these videos that you're watching at the moment are also on YouTube. So you can go to the YouTube channel, which is Mr. Jason Gowdy. So YouTube slash Mr. Jason Gowdy, and you'll get to these videos or all of the videos for all the different types of chemistry. You know, one, two, three, and four. Let's have a look at equilibrium. Starting off, equilibrium here, you have our key words. These are the words that you're going to hear repeated over and over when we look at equilibrium. This video is going to be broken up into probably three parts. Um, one where we look at um, the theory behind equilibrium and what equilibrium is. The second one where we look at calculations involving equilibrium. And the third one where we actually do some sample problems for equilibrium. So if you're, you want to cruise straight through to those, you can do that as well. And um, I'll get those up as soon as I possibly can. Let's have a look at what equilibrium actually is. Now, I've got this um, diagram here of a, a, a sink where we're putting water into it and it's got a hole in it as well. When this system is in equilibrium, the amount of water does not change. What that means is the amount of water that goes into the sink and comes out is exactly the same. It's coming in and out at the same rate. That means that the water level doesn't rise and it doesn't fall, it just stays there level. In a chemical reaction, you get equilibrium where you have the amounts of reactants and products staying the same, meaning that the forward reaction that's happening and we also have a reverse reaction is the same. Let's look at that in a bit more detail. For example, hopefully this will be, yep. Very rarely do we see a full reaction happen in a chemical uh, reaction. Not all reactants turn into products, that means. Even if we do have the correct ratio stoichiometric ratio and no limiting reagent. Take for example this Haber process or the Haber process where we're turning nitrogen and hydrogen into um, ammonia. Now if this was um, what actually happened we would start off with one mole of nitrogen, three moles of hydrogen and we would end up with exactly two moles of ammonia. But this isn't the case. We don't get a hundred percent yield and this causes massive problems when we do things on a large scale because um, obviously in the production of ammonia we want to make as much as this as possible and if we don't get 100% this is an issue. The reason is because these reactions can be reversed. Most reactions actually do go backwards. Let's have a look at um, how that looks as well. Production of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen always has some hydrogen and nitrogen gas left over when it reaches equilibrium. We have a forward reaction here where we have nitrogen and hydrogen forming ammonia. We also have a reverse reaction where ammonia breaks apart into nitrogen and hydrogen. We can combine these two and use this little guy here, this arrow which is forward and back, which is known as our equilibrium arrow. So this is our equilibrium reaction, our chemical equation, for the Haber process, the production of ammonia. Okay, where we have going forward and going backwards. These two reactions happen simultaneously. Okay, so they're, they're constantly happening. We're constantly forming ammonia, we're constantly having ammonia break up. Okay, when it reaches equilibrium, these two reactions happen at the same rate. Let's have a look at some diagrams for this. Okay, here's two diagrams here. I'll start off with the right one here and we'll look at the concentration. Okay, at the start of my reaction, say I have an empty vessel, I have a, um, a one litre container for example. I put one mole of nitrogen and I put three moles of hydrogen in, into that container. I start off with no ammonia whatsoever. As time goes on, or as the reaction progresses along the x-axis here, as time goes on, what happens? 
the hydrogen starts to react with the um, nitrogen and we start to form ammonia here. Okay, so the, the amount of hydrogen goes down, the amount of nitrogen goes down, and the amount of ammonia increases. This happens until we get to a point where each of these concentrations are stable. What this is, is where the, um, where the reaction is in equilibrium. Okay, so at equilibrium, our reactions or our amounts stay constant. They don't change. If we look at over here, this on the left hand side, our graph here, we've got our constant, sorry, our rates of reactions. Right at the start, where we only have nitrogen and hydrogen, we have a very fast forward reaction happening. So the reaction going forward is very, very fast. The reverse reaction isn't happening at all because we haven't actually got any ammonia at the moment. But as time goes on, we start to produce more ammonia and the back reaction starts to increase. The forward reaction starts to decrease because we're getting less nitrogen and hydrogen. So what happens when equilibrium is, is established, these two rates are exactly the same. Okay, The rates stay the same, so therefore the concentrations are constant. Okay, It's not that the reactions stop happening, it's just the fact that the rates of the reaction are equal when we get to equilibrium. So let's just summarize this and let's just say that what equilibrium is. The fact of the matter is not all reactions go to completion. Okay, we don't get 100% yield all the time. Equilibrium is when the reaction reaches a state where the amounts of reactants and the products uh, remain constant. So the amounts of products appears like they're not forming anymore and the rates of reactants or the amounts of reactants appear like they're not being reduced anymore. Okay, where the amounts stay constant. At equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions are occurring at the same rate. Important to know that they don't stop occurring. The reaction has not finished, it has just reached a state where it's got equilibrium. Equilibrium is affected by temperature. This will come in more of a play a bit later on where we talk about temperature. Okay, but equilibrium works by setting up um, at different temperatures. If you change the temperature, you change where the amounts of reactants go. So obviously changing the temperature affects equilibrium. So each equilibrium is at a set temperature. Reversible reactions are shown using the equilibrium arrow, and that's the one where you have a forward and a back at the same time. So that's the basic summary of what equilibrium actually is. As I said, the next um, video is about equilibrium calculations. So I'll get stuck into making that one.